Hey everyone, it's Brian here from Exact IT Solutions. Welcome to another video in Cybersecurity Awareness Month 2020. Today is October 16, 2020. Today, uh, before we get into the content, I want to remind everybody that uh, we don't get paid to uh, do anything on this channel and we don't uh, get any sponsors and YouTube doesn't pay us. The only fee that we ask for this content is if you hit the like button down below and maybe you consider subscribing to our channel. So without further ado, let's get into the content. Today we're going to talk about how to protect yourself from cyber attacks and what you can do on an individual level to make sure that you don't get uh, attacked or you don't make it easier for hackers to attack you or maybe where your employer where you work um, I know many of you that watch this channel are not business owners you work for companies um, and you play an important role in the whole cybersecurity uh, landscape um, you know some consider the employees and and people who aren't in technology aren't in IT as the weakest link in the cybersecurity chain because a lot of attacks happen through emails and people clicking on phishing emails or clicking on website links that um, they just didn't know they shouldn't click on. Uh, so today we're going to talk about one of the most important things that you can do to protect yourself from a cyber attack or being the cause or victim of a cyber attack. Um, these are best practices that you should put into not only your personal life, but in your professional life as well, if you work for a company or anything like that. Um, and then that number one thing is password use and password management. Um, I highly recommend that everybody use a password manager and the benefits of a password manager are pretty, pretty good, pretty high. Um, first off, uh, hackers are building repositories of passwords on the dark web. They're going in the dark web after they um, attack a database where they get into a company system and they're able to pull data out of that. They pour through it and if they can find passwords, usernames, or anything associated with an individual, they will post that on the dark web. Um, I know I personally have had my uh, information passwords and things like that posted on the dark web and i'm sure you have too um, the dark web is chock full of email addresses associated with passwords uh, sometimes those passwords are in plain text sometimes they're hashed up um, and it's only a matter of time before somebody comes along and possibly unhashes those passwords um, so this is why it's really important to not reuse passwords across multiple accounts. Hackers, this is what makes them more successful than anything. Um, they are able to look at this data that's on the dark web and start using what's known as brute force password software to then try to crack maybe different variations of this password that you use because many people have a bad habit of creating a password or changing a password to something that's very similar to something that they use across many different websites and applications. So for instance, if you use the same password to log into your social media accounts like Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, um, and then you use a similar password to log into your work computer or a computer at your house, that's not a good thing because if any of these websites get hacked, the hackers will take your password and they'll put it into a database in on the dark web or they'll put it in a form into a dark web where all this information is shared and compiled and collected and if you're using a separate password across all these sites this is not a problem for you um, and password managers make this very easily um, uh, make this very easy to accomplish uh, things uh, programs like LastPass uh, RoboForm. Um, those are the two that I recommend. Now they all pretty much do the same thing. They allow you to store and track passwords. Many of them have security features built in where they can show you 
uh, your security risk and how often you're reusing certain passwords and it allows you to easily see that you're using the same password on you know a number of sites that's a really cool feature and a really useful feature that's built into these programs so you can quickly go in and look and say oh I'm using the same password on these four sites I need to change that um, the other thing a password manager does for you is it allows you to go to a website and it allows you to generate a random uh, password with any character set that you want or you can make it fit to whatever the requirements of that web application are. Um, so, you know, a good best practice is, is just to set like a 16 character random password for every website that you log into, a different one for every website you log into. Um, and then what happens with the password managers is you, you have one password to remember and that's called your master password. Um, I also recommend that your master password be something strong um, that you can try to remember, but don't make it a word. Don't make it a word that you can phonetically spell out in the dictionary. Um, use something that's meaningful to you, like initials of people that you know, uh, numbers and dates of people that uh, you, you birth dates or um, not your own birth date I would use other people's birth dates and I would use other numbers that maybe are not relevant to something that could be tied back to you like don't use maybe the number of your house address don't use things um, you know like your your birth date use a friend's birthday um, you know and don't use the full birthday use maybe a combination of the month and the day of a couple people you know maybe your favorite players jersey numbers um, those are types of ways that you can kind of remember your master password um, without you know using a word like um, Fido is the best or you know some phrase like that that these password cracking software programs are getting better faster and they can crack very common passwords that don't use any special characters or or aren't randomized in any way the number one thing you can do um, in, in this whole security realm around password management is not only creating a separate uh, password for every site but if you can even create a unique username for every site that you use um, you know every every login requires a username and a password and if you're using the same username across multiple websites. Now, in most, in a lot of cases, you don't have the choice. You have to use your email address, which is fine. Um, but in the event that you have the option to uh, further make yourself even more secure and you're allowed to set a username, um, try not to set it to like your name or something that a, somebody could easily guess. Make it a random string of characters, which a password manager will allow you to do very easily um, and then the other really nice thing about password managers is when you go back to your website like let's say you go back to Facebook or you go back to your banking website uh, when you go to that website and and you have a, a uh, button on top at the top of your browser for the password manager um, you can click that button or a lot of times it'll integrate it with the fields on the screen and you just click the field and it automatically fills in those fields with your username and password and then all you have to do is hit submit. So that's nice because then you don't have to type in the password every time and the other security feature around that is if you happen to be uh, unfortunately un infected with a keylogger or any kind of uh, malware that is recording keystrokes and sending it back to a hacker somewhere um, when you're not typing anything into the keyboard and you're using a password manager this is a you know a very good way for you to protect yourselves from things like that so that you're not typing passwords in constantly across many sites um, the only issue with that is is that you will have to type in your master password um, so if a hacker can figure out that you're typing in a master password uh, on your uh, and you have a keylogger on, that's a problem for you. So you don't want somebody getting your master password for your password manager. That needs to remain highly secure 
um, and nobody should have access to it and unless you have a way to get that somebody in the event that you die or something like that. So those are things you have to think about. Um, so, uh, you know, that is the best advice I could give you is don't reuse passwords across anything. Have a separate password for everything that you do. So a lot of people I know use their um, same password for like Facebook that they do to, to log into their work computer or their work email. And this is not a good thing. Um, this practice needs to stop because this is how companies are getting hacked. Um, we just had like a Barnes and Noble breach the other day. Um, the Barnes and Noble breach exposed a lot of information about Barnes and Noble customers. Let's suppose that you work for a company and you happen to use your company email address to log into Barnes and Noble's website. Um, and you happen to use a password, either the same password or a very similar password to uh, log into your work computer as you do with uh, Barnes and Noble. Um, so a hacker could take that information and go, okay, what domain is this, is this, uh, that belongs to what company and then figures it out by just pulling the domain name of your, your email address. Um, they, they figure out you, you work for, you know, let's say Lockheed Martin. And now you, now you're a Lockheed Martin employee and we have, you know, a password for you. So why don't we try to start penetrating Lockheed Martin servers and things like that using this person's either email address, maybe their username, which could be the same uh, as the beginning part of their email. Um, if your name is Sally Jones and your email address is sjones at lockheedmartin.com, maybe sjones is your login for your computer and maybe your uh, Barnes and Noble account is the same password as what you use to log into your work computer or something close to it. Maybe we just have to run that password through a software program and use some variations and add some characters and things like that and see if we can brute force our way in um, using a, a password cracking tool. So this is reality. This is how things go down. Um, so if you're watching this video, and you know that you use multiple of the same passwords across multiple sites and you use it to log into computers and things like that, uh, when you're done watching this video, go buy yourself a password manager. LastPass is free. Um, you know, there's certain limitations on, on the features that you get with the free version, but it's better than nothing. Go get yourself a password manager. And unfortunately, it's going to take you a while to go through and change your password across all these sites. There's no magic bullet that's going to allow you to change your password in one shot with a click of a button. You're going to have to go to every website and um, fill out their you know, login, go to their change password page, and then change your password by generating a new password. Um, some of the tools out there claim that they can automatically go through and, and fix this. None of them, uh, to my experience, work that well. Um, they can change the password automatically on some sites, but on a lot of sites, they just can't. Um, especially if you have two-factor enabled on a lot of these sites, which you should have uh, enabled, um, it makes it difficult for the, for the uh, password manager to do that. But the nice thing is, once you go through and do it, you don't have really ever have to do it again because you would rather be proactive about it and do it now than find out your passwords on the dark web and then have to do it because you know hackers now have your password. Um, and what are you gonna do? Just leave that password out there for hackers to try to get into various different sites because you use that same password across all these different sites? Um, that's not a good idea. So. You know, if you do do have a dark web scan done and you find out that your your email address and your passwords that you like to use have been compromised, you have to go through and change that. And you know, if you're if you're lucky enough not to have your stuff on the dark web, you definitely want to be proactive and start going through and changing your password across these different sites um, because. It, it's very stressful to find out that your password is on the dark web and then now you need to go through and figure out 
where your where your web where where your password is the same on all of these websites. Um, so, and once you have everything in the password manager, this will be very easy for you to see. But if you've never used the password manager before, you're going to have to unfortunately uh build out your password manager database and as you're doing that it's a good idea just to go in and change the password as you're logging into each site and adding it to um, your password manager so i hope this helped you understand how to protect yourself this is probably the easiest one of the easiest and, and biggest ways that hackers um, exploit people and get into systems by um, password reuse is what what it's known as um, and it's as simple as implementing good password hygiene not using the same password uh, at all on on multiple sites and you know the easiest way to manage this is using a tool like uh, a password manager um, like I said I recommend LastPass or um, RoboForm and uh, those two tools will get you what you need and it will help you tremendously protect not only yourself, but if you work for a company, it'll help that your company won't become a victim because your password was out on the dark web. So I hope you learned something in this video today, folks. I uh, want to ask anyone if you liked anything in this video, learned anything, were intrigued by anything, that you please hit the like button below. Drop a comment below and let us know, uh, do you use a password manager or are you guilty of uh, using multiple passwords across the same same sites or across the same password across multiple sites? Um, and, you know, if there's anything that you want to see us do on this channel, please drop them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from our subscribers and people that watch our videos. Um, and, you know, if you are so inclined, please remember to click the like button below. Um, it really helps us out with Google and the algorithm and people seeing our content and becoming more cyber aware. It is Cybersecurity Awareness Month 2020, and we are giving away a $200 Amazon gift card on November 1st to anybody who is subscribed to our channel as of October 31st. You just have to be 18 years of age or older to qualify and in the United States. So um, I hope everybody has a great weekend. I typically don't post on the weekends, so I will see you all Monday uh, heading into our third week of Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and uh, I'll see you all soon. Make it a great day, everyone. Take care.